ISA 700 forming an opinion and reporting on financial statements. Once again, scope, objective, requirements have been highlighted. I also just want to discuss this again. Our application paragraph numbering differs, but again, refer what, to what I have highlighted here, and then go and make sure that you address all the paragraphs that link to your application paragraphs for that paragraph. Okay, so for an example, and uh, form of an opinion, here I've got A11 to A12, but you would have A16 to A17 if you are working off the 2020-2021 standards. Okay, so just refer to the actual paragraph name and then use your numbering. Another huge thing to note, I've highlighted this appendix because the appendix gives you examples of the auditor's report. So you can see exactly how it's laid out if you're ever required to comment on an auditor's report or to draft specific paragraphs. Remember, SAPS 3 also has loads of examples of auditor's reports. So you can also go there to see if the situation that you're addressing in a question is covered there. Okay, so let's start with the requirements. So here are the requirements. We must make sure that the financials are prepared according to the financial reporting framework. We're comfortable we've got enough evidence and that there are no material misstatements. We're comfortable that they've disclosed everything and their accounting policies are reasonable. In which case we will then give an unmodified opinion which is the same as saying unqualified. You can use either of those terms. If they are not free, then we are going to have to modify according to ISA 705. Then guys, the rest of the standard actually just writes out what the auditor's report needs to look like. But I think it's way better for you to actually look at the auditor's report to see what it looks like. So go to the appendix and here we've got You've got a whole bunch of illustrative examples. I'm just going to look at one with you so that you can see. Okay, so here it is. It's addressed to the shareholders. And then you've got the opinion. And it says, we have audited the financials for the company, which comprise of, we need to include that it's the statement of financial position, Comprehensive income statement of change. Let's in say 700. And the Let's look at You have to give the composition of the financial statements that you're reporting on. And then you will state, in your opinion, the financial statements fairly present in all material aspects the financial position, performance, and cash flows of the year. So the basis for our opinion is that we conducted our audits and under those standards that we are required to and we've fulfilled our ethical responsibilities and we have obtained sufficient and appropriate evidence. Okay, if there's any key matters, we're going to look at that just now. We will include a paragraph. We'll then give management's responsibilities, which was for the preparation of the financial statements and for implementing internal control measures. And then we'll give the auditor's responsibilities, which were to get reasonable assurance whether the financials were free from material misstatement. And then you would include any reports on other legal or regulatory factors that's only if they've not complied. We'll then give the engagement partner's name, signature, and address of the auditor with the date to follow. So this is our modification to the audit opinion. Standard paragraphs have been highlighted. However, types of modified opinions is new, so we need to look at that. Also note, appendix has been highlighted. So, just to note the types of modifications, 
Either you could give a qualified, an adverse, or a disclaimer of an opinion. And it depends on the severity of the misstatements or whether you are unable to obtain evidence. The pervasiveness will either tell me to go adverse or disclaimer. And A1 gives me some help there. So here we're saying, are the financials materially misstated and it's not pervasive, then I will give a qualified. If the financials are materially misstated and it is pervasive, I'll give an adverse opinion. Or, if I was unable to get the evidence I need, but it was not pervasive, qualified, unable to get the evidence and affected multiple balances and transactions, disclaimer. It's a nice table to help you there. Okay, look at the requirements. The auditor will modify if we can see that they are not free from material misstatements or we were unable to get the evidence to show that they are free from material misstatements. So if we go to our A3 here, which says what your misstatements are, difference between amounts, presentation, classification, and so on, and also gives you some examples. Maybe qualitatively, it could be because your accounting policies are not appropriate, you haven't had adequate disclosures on them. Then we get into the different opinions. The first type, qualified opinion. We were able to get the evidence, but the evidence proved that there was misstatements, but that misstatement was not pervasive. Or the second type where we were unable to get the evidence, but limited to certain areas, so it was not pervasive, I go with qualified. Adverse opinion is the extreme of qualified where I was able to get the evidence, but that evidence said that the misstatements were pervasive. And disclaimer is the pervasive impact of being unable to obtain evidence, and therefore, I give a disclaimer because it's pervasive. Okay. I don't want you to worry about that. Then we get to the form and content, and I've also just made a note here. Rather look at the appendix to actually see examples of them to help you with them. Okay, so here's the first one. So your audit report starts with, I'm giving a qualified opinion, and we're saying we audited the financials, which comprise of, so the composition is here, statement of financial position, comprehensive income, changes in equity and cash flows, and then in our opinion, except for the effects of what's described in the basis of the qualified opinion, the financials fairly present in all material respects the financial performance and its cash flows. And then in the basis of the qualified opinion, we go and say what was the problem. So inventories are carried in the statement of financial position at this amount. Management have not stated them at the lower of cost or net realizable value. And so that means that they have not complied with IFRS, so they departed from IFRS. And then you go and say, if they had, this was the amount it needed to be recorded at. Okay, so you're proving to them what the problem actually is. Then you'll see they have the key audit matters paragraph, which is what we're going to look at next. And anything else that we need to include, so the responsibilities of management, auditors, and then if there's a report on other legal or regulatory requirements, so that's where they potentially not complied with a specific legislation or regulation, that needs to be included. Okay, let's look at the next illustrative example for an adverse opinion. Again, we've got our start with, we have audited, and we include all the details of the financial statements. We give our opinion, which is referenced to the basis for the adverse opinion. 
and then we explain here for the basis what the problem was with the financials as to why we believe that the financials are materially misstated in multiple aspects, hence the adverse. You'll see here, for key audit matters paragraph, if the information that we want to include as key audit matters is only related to the opinion or the reason why I've given an adverse, I just make reference to the adverse, the basis for the adverse. I don't actually go into the detail of the key audit matters because I'm not going to repeat. Okay, and you'll see that'll make a little bit more sense when we get there next. Okay, and the rest all remains the same. And then if we just have a look at illustration four where they give a disclaimer of an opinion, just want to show you the first part. We don't say we audited, we make a note that we were engaged to audit. And then we explain here, we do not express an opinion because of the reasons included in the basis. And then in the basis we explain why we can't give an opinion because we were not able to access the information we needed. Note, there's no key audit pa matters paragraph because there can't be anything significant to topple the fact that I'm disclaiming my opinion. Okay, so let's go have a look at this key audit matters paragraph.